Hi there, my name is Vic Beer. I'm an ENT surgeon working for the NHS in central London. And today I want to tell you about a mastoidectomy. A mastoidectomy, which is what I talked about in my last video, is an operation on this bone here. This is the bone behind your ear. You can feel it like a bulge here, and you can feel the tip of it just down here. So like a almost like a banana behind your ear. But what I want to do is explain that there are two different types of mastoidectomy. There's a slightly older approach and slightly newer approach. Some people uh, use both. I sometimes use both for different types of people. Um, and I'll try and explain uh, the two most basic different types of doing this operation. Many years ago, nearly everyone did this operation, a canal wall down operation. What that means is to get to this bone, what we did was we operated in the ear. I'll draw some pictures here as well. So you go into the ear canal and you remove the back wall of the ear canal and you enter into this honeycomb and you go, ah, oh, right, let's give it all a clean out. And now that we've done that, what will the patient will end up with is a, a normal ear canal with a big hole through the back surface of it. So the, in, uh, the posterior surface of it. So in me, this would be the hole and this wall here is broken open and you can enter into this bone here. I hope that makes sense. The slightly newer technique is where you keep the canal wall up so you don't actually bash through that back wall of the ear canal, but do not cut through the posterior wall of your ear canal. So you keep those two things as separate entities. Um, and the idea behind that is to try and reduce some of the side effects of making this big hole between the ear canal and the mastoid bone, because there are situations where it doesn't work very well because uh, you had to make a very big hole in the mastoid bone. Normally, you don't have to make a huge, um, big cavity, but sometimes you do. Perhaps the infection is very big or the cholesteatoma is very big. And I said there's another video on my channel about cholesteatomas which is normally, uh, in my practice anyway, the most common reason for uh, doing this operation. But you're left with this big extra cavity inside your ear. Now, um, the problem is at the lower part of your ear canal, uh, just about here, I'll show you on the, uh, on the diagrams, there is a nerve that goes to your face, what we would call, interestingly enough, the facial nerve. So this nerve comes out like this and spreads across your face like that. And it powers or controls the muscles of facial expression. So that means that if you lose that nerve, if you cut through that nerve, your whole face droops down, a bit like you've had a stroke on one side. Um, so we don't want to cut that, obviously. So you can't cut through that area. So you end up with this weird lip, and then it drops down into the mastoid cavity, if you've had to go all the way down there. Now, it's fine. It's easy to do in an operation. You can clear that area out. You can look around that corner, sometimes with telescopes, sometimes with microscopes, whatever. But the problem is afterwards, you get this deep trench behind there and trying to get debris out of there later on becomes a problem because the gunk and the wax and all the other things that tend to fill up in the ear doesn't come out naturally. There's a, uh, the cells normally grow out of your ear. So it's like a, it's like a, like a travelator at the airport. You know, you, you, you stand there and, and it just pushes you along like, like this. So you're not going up or down, you just go across. And these cells migrate out of the ear, dragging away all the debris to keep your ears clean. If there's a big sort of valley inside your ear, sometimes these cells can't bring the debris out and it just ends up filling up with this smelly, uh, infected type of material. And you end up having to go back to see your surgeon every four to six months for the rest of your life, which is horrible. You know, nobody wants to do that. To keep their ears clean, stop you from getting infection, stop it from smelling. If you do do a canal wall down operation, so you've connected the two together, at the end of the operation, you can reconstruct that wall again. Now, now I do this quite often as well. In a situation where I go, actually, the cholesterol has already made a hole between the two. It's already eaten away, or the infection's already eaten away, what we'd call an automastoidectomy. It's already eaten away the canal wall and the mastoid. There's a big gigantic hole, we might as well use it. Let's get in there, clean everything out, try not to make it any bigger than it needs to, but there is a hole there. In that situation, I don't want to leave a hole there. So you can reconstruct, make a new wall there. Uh, and there's lots of different ways of doing that. You can use bone dust and you can use cartilage. You can use all sorts of things, depending on how big the wall is. And I've got a video on mastoid obliteration if you want to look at that in my channel. But the idea is to reconstruct that wall so that you don't get the problems of these issues happening again in the future. Now, um, 
the reason why I don't like to do that, because I, I know the, the papers suggest there's a slight reduction in hearing quality after a canal wall down with wall reconstruction compared to a canal wall up operation. But I think it's minimal. It, it really depends on what the um, how you reconstruct the wall, uh, how big the, uh, the original pathology is, all sorts of other things. But hopefully you'll understand the two most basic different types of mastoidectomy. Canal wall down where there's a big hole and then you have to either reconstruct it or come back every sort of four to six months. There are ways around that as well, but I'm not going to confuse everyone with that. Or you can do a canal wall up operation where you go behind. It's a lot harder, a little bit more difficult, takes slightly longer. They've all got their, both these different types of operations have their pros and cons. And if anyone's interested, I'll do another video and explain that in a little bit more detail. But hopefully, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Anyway, I'll talk to you about that in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.